So this may look like Mars, but in fact this is a location on Earth and it's a particular environment that has similarities to the Martian environment. So it's a very good place to come and consider what it might be like to send humans to Mars. If you're a human being on the surface of Mars, you can look around, you can spot rocks, you can think about what they look like, take a step to the right, take a step to the left, look in the shadows, maybe tap them with a geological hammer and get some extra information and immediately process it uh, using your brain. So far, most of our exploration on the Martian surface has been done by robots. And robots provide a certain level of information, but it's usually quite prescribed. And so we have to sort of know what we're going to do before we get there. If you send human beings to Mars, then human beings can uh, really react to the information that they're, they're receiving. So one of the interesting things on Mars is the difference between the rocks and the dust. So the rocks represent local materials, but dust is material that's been abraded, sweeped up into the atmosphere and distributed around the globe. So one sample of dust on any point of Mars contains a great deal of global information. And from a human exploration point of view, dust is very important. Dust gets everywhere. It gets in your suit, it gets in your breathing apparatus, and it could be toxic. So when we send humans to Mars, we can be pretty sure there's life on the red planet because we'll have took it there. But one of the great questions is, has life existed on Mars in the past? How we detect life or evidence of past life on, on Mars is, is a difficult question. What is the best way to actually go about finding information that's in a form that we don't currently know how it's going to look. If you send a human to Mars, then that human can really make decisions on the spot. They can follow leads like a good detective. And that is something that's quite unique to human exploration. Mm -hmm.